Results. This is News 6 at 6. Breaking just into our newsroom, a man accused of sparking a string of arsons was just arrested. We're expecting deputies to walk him out of jail at any moment now. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. In the past 30 minutes, we learned the suspect, James Bennett, was arrested in connection with a number of arsons in Lake County. News 6 reporter Nadine Giannis joins us now live from Lake County with the latest on this. And Nadine, he has been on their radar for weeks now. <laughs> He has and now Northern Lake County and the Umatilla area can take a sigh of relief with the news of this arrest. We are waiting. We heard less than five minutes now. 48 year old Anthony Bennett from Altoona will be brought here to the Lake County Jail. That deputy's car should be coming in here any minute now for his burp walk as he is going to be booked in. Let's take a look at who this guy is from an old mugshot that we had. 48 years old Anthony Bennett was just arrested and charged with four counts of arson and armed burglary. Lake County deputies connected him to four of the nine fires that terrorized Northern Lake County and Umatilla area for nine days. Now, deputies confirm that this is Bennett in surveillance video connected to fires at the Sunoco gas station in Umatilla, Old Crow Barbecue Restaurant, two mobile homes, and even setting a deputy's patrol car on fire. And it looks like a couple of vehicles are being rolled in while we speak, guys. Let's take a second and see if this could be our suspect. 48-year-old Anthony Bennett, again, we're, we're told, was just arrested this afternoon in connection with the Umatilla area fires in Northern Lake County. Nine of them in the last nine days. And there was a task force of 25 people since then. February 15th through the 27th, these t fires terrorized Umatilla. And these guys from Lake County Sheriff's Office, Umatilla Police Department, Lake County Fire Department, the County Fire Marshal's Office, and the State Fire Marshal's Office all coming to get this man right here, 48-year-old Anthony Bennett, being pulled into the Lake County Jail as we speak. Anthony, right now you're being charged with four of the nine fires. Do you want to say anything? Is there anything you wanted to say? Excuse us. Was there a motive for the reason you say you did this, sir? Is there anything you want to say? <laughs> Why did you do this? And guys, right here, that's 48-year-old Anthony Bennett being pulled into, brought into the Lake County Jail as we speak, connected to four of the nine arsons that happened in Umatilla area back in February. He's being charged with four counts of arson, including two counts of armed burglary. And we also know that he's about to be booked into jail on a $300,000 bond. Guys, we're going to keep following this as it develops right now and toss it back to you. Yeah, it's a story that has uh, startled people in Lake County for some time. So I know a lot of people were anxious to see what came of that. Nadine Giannis reporting live in Lake County. We'll have much more on that to come. Moving on now, the city of Mount Dora is apologizing tonight. That's more of a surveillance video there we from go. those arsons. Now we're moving yeah. on. City of Mount Dora apologizing a police chief under fire. The reason his words. Here's News 6. This is News 6 at 6. We're glad you could join us tonight. Yeah, the chief has been placed on paid leave, accused of making racially insensitive comments at an event on Friday. News 6's Vanessa Ariza is live at the police department tonight. And Vanessa, what is the city saying about this? Lisa, a spokesperson with the city of Mount Dora released a statement just a few hours ago saying that the chief of police's comments were insensitive and inappropriate. Mount Dora's police chief, John O'Grady, began working for the department back in 2013. He served as their public safety director and was pegged to take on the position as chief once the former chief retired. His personnel file shows he's held in high regard, with others complimenting his accomplishments. But the law enforcement veteran is under fire after comments he made at a golf tournament on Friday. During the ceremony, Chief O'Grady is said to have made a racially insensitive remark about Hispanics. Laura Hargrove is an attorney for a couple who owns a Cuban restaurant in downtown Mount Dora. On her social media page, she explains an award was to be presented to them, but a medical emergency kept them from attending. The chief, she says, decided to allow a Hispanic officer to accept on their behalf. He reportedly said they were the same. A spokesperson for the city said, quote, 
The remarks are in no way reflective of the city's values, principles, and ideals, and can only be characterized as insensitive and inappropriate. An interview with the chief was declined. The city spokesperson said an apology will be sent to all members and sponsors who attended the Mount Dora Heroes Foundation golf tournament. And the attorney for that couple tells me that they have yet to receive that apology letter from the city. It's her understanding that they will receive that tomorrow, she says. Until then, her clients will continue to support their community as well as their city. She says she looks forward to getting that letter tomorrow and putting all of this behind them. Live in Mount Dora tonight, Vanessa Ariza getting results. News 6. Vanessa, thank you. 2,800 subpoenas, 500 search warrants, and about 500 witness interviews have culminated into one 400-page report. Attorney General William Barr released the redacted report this morning, the document outlining special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Mueller's investigation focused on two things, if there was obstruction of justice and if there was any collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Mueller's team writing, there wasn't enough evidence to establish obstruction of justice, and the Trump campaign did not take any criminal steps with Russia. We now know that the Russian operatives who perpetrated these schemes did not have the cooperation of President Trump or the Trump campaign. I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. And here's some interesting information. We do know Florida was somehow involved in this investigation. The Mueller report mentions an email meant to steal data was sent to 120 accounts used by Florida local election officials. The FBI is saying they believe Russians hacked at least one Florida county. Now congressional Democrats are requesting Robert Mueller's testimony before Congress, quote, as soon as possible. Maybe then we'll learn more. You can read the redacted report for yourself on our website. Just go to clickorlando.com. You'll find it on the homepage. And tonight you can learn more about Mueller's report and lawmaker reaction. Watch it on the CBS Evening News. That's coming up at 630. Tomorrow is a weather alert day. A strong storm system threatening violent weather is headed our way. It has already brought hail, high wind, and some tornadoes to central Gulf Coast states. Video shows the aftermath of strong storms in Fort Bend, Texas. A collapsed metal barn and downed trees were spotted in the area southwest of Houston. And video from storm damage in Shreveport, Louisiana. You can see a tree toppled over there right in front of a home. Crews have been working all day to restore power. That same system that caused all of that damage is headed our way. Chief Meteorologist Tom Searles is pinpointing and tracking the latest for us. And Tom, it is very clear on radar what's headed our way. Yep, come take a look right now. You see it extending all the way from Memphis, Tennessee to Jackson, Mississippi, all the way down to New Orleans. Much of the big energy will escape to the north, so I'm not expecting big hailstones to damage your house, crush your car windshields like it's been doing back out here. But you see there are two lines, one line here and a second one in behind it. That's going to play a big factor in what happens to us eventually. But right now, it's just so ugly up in those parts of the woods from Hattiesburg all the way down to Biloxi is where it's really at its toughest. Tornado warning after tornado warning has been issued tonight with that squall line. While here at home, our light scattered showers are breaking out on the sea breeze right now. These are not tied to the nastiness that's coming our way tomorrow. This cloud cover is sea breeze driven. Temperature reading right now in Orlando is down from 90 to 88. I'll be right back to pinpoint the arrival of the nasty weather for your Friday and when it clears out of here so you can enjoy your weekend. See you in a few. Tom, thank you. You yeah. can get all the latest weather alerts directly on your phone by downloading our free Pinpoint Weather app. We'll let you know when storms move through your area. Just search WKMG in your app store. A possible change of course in the air that could provide some noise relief on the ground. Yeah, Florida Aviation Administration is considering changing the flight paths of airplanes going and coming from Orlando International Airport. That could help some neighbors who complain it's just too loud where they live. News Six's Jerry Askin joins us live from the Winter Park Community Center, where neighbors are meeting to give their input on these possible changes, Jerry. 
Matt, yes, and that meeting began here in about about five minutes ago at the Winter Park Community Center. The FAA hoping to get more community feedback when it comes to air traffic control, possible changes. Many residents, though, as you mentioned, saying noise is their biggest concern. Here and looky, looky how how down that airplane is tonight. Many residents are sounding off over loud noise soaring high above their homes from this airplanes landing at the Orlando International Airport. Because it's too loud. Too loud. And that bothers you. And that's a, a daytime. Imagine nighttime. Many residents are hoping a meeting tonight hosted by the Federal Aviation Authority will address this. Some of them come a lot lower and of course a lot louder. I guess it depends on the type of aircraft also. The FAA saying the plan is to discuss proposed traffic control procedures and get community feedback on ways to enhance safety and efficiency in the air. We got these maps today. It shows you some proposed changes, and the FAA said the changes could mean flights flying more efficiently. So it's important to us to get the public input now, and then we'll begin an environmental process with a noise analysis over the next year or so. At a meeting at OIA yesterday, the noise abatement board showed maps like the one here of loud noise over homes in Orlando an issue many residents hope the FAA will consider and address. It, it does get annoying. I don't see why they can't go further east where there's less, less. And that meeting runs here until 9 p.m. at the Winter Park Community Center. We're live in Winter Park. Jerry Askin getting results. New 6. All right, Jerry, thank you. Well, a Central Florida program saving taxpayers $2 million since its inception. Next, how this week's Getting Results Award winner helps put money in the pockets of local families. You're watching News 6 at 6, Getting Results for Coco, Winter Garden, and all of Central Florida. We'll be right back. We are staying on top of breaking news in Lake County. At the top of the newscast, we showed you this live as suspect James Bennett was arrested in connection with a number of arsons in Lake County. Deputies say a witness came forward and helped them make the arrest. You can read more about this arrest right now at clickorlando.com. Well, the tax deadline has come and gone, and for many, all of the number crunching was brutal. But most people don't know a national program offers free tax prep for families who make less than $55,000 a year. So we went to Volusia County, where this week's Getting Results Award winner has helped thousands of people cash in on refunds at no charge. Lots of letters, lots of numbers, lots of forms. Numbers. It depends on a whole bunch of stuff. Anxiety. Like, oh, let's see what we can do here. And a looming deadline. So Uncle Sam may charge you a penalty. For what? That can only mean one went. thing. Oh, uh, like quarterly tax. Your exactly. year in review. There's your gas expense for the whole year. Broken into numbers. I do. And when it comes to numbers. I do like numbers. Bonnie Holloway. Numbers are safe. Has you covered. Everything gets started okay. The Stetson University visiting lecturer has been coordinating the volunteer tax assistance program here on campus. All right, where are we? For five years. Income tax is like a game where if you know the rules better than the next guy, then you can serve your clients better than the next guy. And Holloway, along with this group of student volunteers, okay. are certainly serving their clients. The students do all all the work and I just kind of hang around the yeah. edges and, and make sure that everything goes okay. She tends to stay in the background and out of the limelight, which is unfortunate because she does so very much. Does so much to give the accounting students real world experience and at the same time yes. saving hundreds okay. on the cost of tax preparation for people like Tammy Jones. I'm, a, I'm just starting my own business um, who had no idea how to even file my taxes. You know, um, that I could find some place like this that could help me for free. Yeah, Bonnie Holloway is definitely getting results. She was nominated for the Getting Results Award by Assistant Site Coordinator Jeffrey Ghost. She has a definite passion for this. She is uh, all about helping out the community. And while she may like numbers, Holloway will tell you the only number that matters is the number of satisfied clients. Stetson values service. That's one of the things that Stetson is known for. And so this is just a form of doing that. It's fun. I wouldn't do it if it weren't fun. There you go, my dear. Thank you Thank so much. You so much Paul. Tell all your friends and neighbors. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she great? Hey, if you know someone like Bonnie getting results, we want to know about them. You can nominate someone you know for the Getting Results Award by going to our website, clickorlando.com. Simply go to the top banner under Getting Results, fill out the form, and you might see them featured right here 
in the coming weeks. And you know what I love about that one? She's using what she has. You know, yes. she's good with numbers, so she helps people with their taxes. I love all the comments that you get from the people that she's helping out for what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very interesting. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell is joining us now. So much going on in the weather department. It's kind of crazy. We have yeah. a big day tomorrow. It's Good Friday. It's yeah. the start of Passover. But the storms kind of play havoc with that. Mm -hmm. The rest of the weekend, I'll show you in a moment. Take a look at what's going on for tonight. Big weather story, breezy. Now we will have some scattered showers out there tonight. They're beginning to occur right now on the East Coast Seabreeze. They're not huge and they have nothing to do with the nastiness that's coming in tomorrow. I'll show you radar in a moment. There are some showers to be had this evening. Tomorrow, heavy to severe storms are still possible, most especially to the north. Marion County, I worry more about you this time than everywhere else. You guys are more of an enhanced area. Instead of just slight, you are enhanced. So I think Marion County could have a big cross to bear tomorrow. Weekend, storms gone. Sunshine returns for Saturday and for Sunday. But you got to get through tomorrow. Now look at this stuff. It is nasty over here in Mississippi and Alabama tonight. All of this is going to the northeast. Much of the energy will be spent by the time the front gets to us. I'm not saying it's not going to storm. I just don't believe we're going to have a huge tornado outbreak like they've had so far through parts of Mississippi here this afternoon. One, two tornado warnings going on right now. Severe thunderstorm warning going all the way down into Louisiana. It is ugly, ugly, ugly. Here at home, they got little pockets of rain right there. East Coast Sea Breeze is into here now. These have formed on the East Coast Sea Breeze and are blowing back up to the northeast. Once the sea breezes collide within the next couple of hours. We'll have a few more of those little showers, but nothing super huge tonight. We'll keep you posted. In the meantime, down to 81 degrees in Daytona Beach. Relative humidity beach side is kind of high, 77%. Beach side in Palm Coast, 81. Flagler County, Bavard County, Titusville, 82. Melbourne, 82. Across the interior, a little bit warmer than that. We hit 90 in Orlando. We're at 88 now. Same in Kissimmee and Ocala. Sanford is at 85. We're eight degrees hotter right now than we were yesterday at the same time, and it's breezy with the wind from the southeast at 15 in Orlando. Here's the water vapor loop. You see the moisture coming our way. It doesn't really do much tonight. We get the sea breezes colliding between now and about 10 or 11. Boom, a few showers. They linger, but tomorrow is the day. Here it comes. Here's 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon with big storms rocking in. By 6, they hit downtown Orlando and push out to the east by 7, 8, and 9. Still dealing with little pockets of rain and 30 mile per hour wind gusts are likely through the afternoon. Saturday and Sunday look much better. Rain totals before it's over more than half of an inch in Orlando. Your low tonight is 72. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning. Okay, you know it's going to storm by midday. The high tomorrow is 86. Check out the week ahead. 86 for the daytime high tomorrow with storms. Then come Saturday, we clear up. 75 Easter Sunday looks beautiful at 78. I'll have new models at 11. Love that weekend. Thank you, Tom. Tonight at 7, are you sick of the construction on I-4? Yeah. Yes, tired of the backups and in some cases the damage to your car. The current project is expected to be completed in about two more years. But investigator Lewis Bolden tells us there is more to come after that. Where and when beyond the ultimate will get in gear. That's coming up at 7. Also new at 7, face to face with the deadliest snake in Florida. A local woman grabbed a machete. But not for the reason you might think, the brave way she ended her coral snake encounter. That's coming up at 7. All right, Sports Director Jamie Say is here. Time for a little home cooking for the Magic. Yeah, that's right. Last time there was playoff basketball in Orlando was a while ago, okay? It was May 5th, 2012. Well, postseason wow. hoops, thankfully, back at the Amway Center now. And there are still a few tickets available for Game 3 if you want some. So how is the Magic's mindset today? Two days removed from the Game 2 blowout and one day before that very important Game 3. We were at Magic, to, uh, Magic practice today, and Coach Clifford delivered some positive reinforcement after this one. You're going to hear from the guys next.